Good morning, guys. Today we will try to find out uh, the brake force at the wheel. So, brake force at the wheel. So, this is the wheel, and it looks like this from the side view. And the wheels will have brake disc like this, and the brake disc will have pad like this on either side, and it will and it will produce some. Force, which you can call it as FP, which stands for the. I think it may actually confuse with the P. I mean, uh, this pedal force. It's not pedal force. The piston force, or simply call it as uh, some name. Now, what name can we give? Huh? What name can we give for the force which is produced at the caliper? The breaking force. Breaking force. Breaking force is this. Breaking force is this, which is actually produced at the contact point of the wheel, and this. So, clamping force. so clamping force. So, some sort of a clamping force. Okay, people can can actually can. I mean, people can understand this as force produced at the caliper. Force caliper is like like clamping only. Caliper as fluid from either sides, it actually presses the brake pads from either sides and it clamps the rotating disc, obviously. Okay, so this is called as the braking force. This you can call it as the clamping force or the caliper force. Where does this? Now, where is this produced? This is produced at this radius. This is produced at this radius. This radius is called as the effective diameter of the sorry, effective radius of the caliper. Sorry, the brake disc. And the, you can call this as R. You can call this as capital R. Capital R stands for effective radius of the beam. And here. What happens here? You got this brake pads. Suppose if the wheel is rotating like this, the brake pads will actually try to oppose this motion, oppose this motion, and they will try to stop this rotation by the friction force here, which you call it as uh, force, which is actually produced at this point about this. Okay. So here, to understand that, which is actually trying to produce here, and this. Because of the moment of the vehicle, and it wants to keep moving like this, so there is there should be a balance between this force into this distance. So this force into this distance, we can call it as a torque, which is actually produced because of the momentum of the vehicle. Because the momentum, you can't actually stop a vehicle which is moving because there is so much of weight in it, and because of the momentum, it keeps the wheel rolling forward. And there is a torque which is actually produced in the opposite direction. That is called the braking torque T B. Okay, so T M that is momentum torque. You can call it as F into R, which is actually the braking force which is produced at the contact point of the wheel and the road. Contact point of the wheel and the road multiplied by capital R, which is the effective radius. And at this point, the brake is trying to stop the wheel from rotating. That radius is R, and the force which is produced. Your friend said it is F C clamping force. Okay, now. I want to find out this F B, F B in terms of this. So I can write this as F C into small r divided by capital R. But what is the force which is produced at this point? What is the force which is produced at this point? Now you know that this caliper is supplied with hydraulic fluid from a what? A master cylinder. A master cylinder has got a piston. It has got a piston. Which actually supplies fluid here, and here you got a brake lever here. Here you got a brake lever. Can a bike? It will be like it, like this. And here you will have an inch, like this if you press, like this if you press, and this is the inch of this brake lever. And here you will have a small extension here. That small extension is to push this piston forward. It is like this. So here, this point, if you now suppose if you try to move it. Brake lever here, the front brake lever here, and this is a single piece. This is a single piece like this, guys. It's a single piece like this, and it's like a belt crank lever. It's like a belt crank lever, and if you push like this, and this actually gets pushed, and therefore all the and all the liquid which is here gets pressurized. That the brake lever gets pressure pressurized here. So whatever is the pressure here, the same pressure is here. Understand? So here you can say that whatever the force which is produced here, 
whatever the force which is sorry not produced applied here they get magnified in two ways one is by mechanical magnification by mechanical magnification why does they give such a long brake levers because <coughs> you want <coughs> mechanical magnification what do you think is the size of the lever guys is it actually bigger than this pen <coughs> so slightly bigger than the pen almost could that be like 35 40 centimeters <coughs> is your brake lever bigger than a small scale yes sir yes sir hold your small scale you will feel it hold your small scale you will feel this it is almost like 15 cm or 15 cm you may have this to be 15 cm effective 15 cm okay and then you consider this to be around 3 cm which means that any force which is applied here at a distance of 15 cm it gets magnified by the ratio of 15 by 3 which is actually 5 times which is actually 5 times and here this is called as mechanical magnification this is called as mechanical magnification and there is hydraulic magnification hydraulic magnification is because hydraulic magnification hydraulic magnification because here in the case of the scanner here you got larger pistons here and larger piston a larger area and it goes to a larger area this is the caliper <coughs> area or you can you can call it as the wheel cylinder area this is the master cylinder area always the area of the hydraulic system in the master cylinder is larger than the sorry the wheel cylinder is larger than the master cylinder so you can say this area is turbo larger by 3 times or 4 times so you have a hydraulic magnification of almost 3 times here the area of this is 3 times so therefore you have hydraulic magnification because pressure is same because we know that the pressure here and here is the same the pressure here and here is the same and therefore pressure is nothing but force into area force into area so force at the master cylinder multiplied by the area at the master cylinder force into area gives you what is actually pressure guys <laughs> pressure is force by area sorry i made a mistake force by area so fm by am is equal to force which is produced at the master master cylinder is equal to force which is produced by the caliper or the wheel cylinder divided by area of the wheel cylinder if you want this the force produced at the wheel cylinder that is the force which is produced here that is the force which is produced here that has to be substituted here you can call it as f fw or or, or fc caliper which is produced at the, the caliper that has to be substituted here so this is nothing but this value is nothing but this so you have to send this here it is fm into aw by am aw by am so here you can say that fw is aw by am so that is one hydraulic magnification one more magnification we have seen that is because of the pedal do you call this as pedal or lever yeah. lever you call it as brake lever and if it was foot if it was operated by foot like this in your in your car you will see that the brake pedal foot is like something like this you have foot here and here you have the inch here maybe then this distance multiplied by this just i mean this this length divided by this length this length would divided by this length would give you mechanical magnification that is leverage you call it as so leverage can be five times here and so that means this which is suppose if i apply a force which is equal to 1 kg here like 1 kg force why i am saying 1 kg i should never use kg because kg is mass but we always feel force in terms of kg because we know what is the force required to keep 1 kg up in our hand so we feel that if i say apply a force of 10 newton that doesn't go to your head 1 kg force if you hold something of 1 kg weight it applies a constant load of almost 9.81 downwards so force unit is newtons 
mass unit is kg okay but uh, but we always try to give you in kgs because you have felt it in kgs throughout your life only in the last few years you have heard about newtons so i'm saying 1 kg force if you apply a force which is equivalent to 1 kg or 1 kg force that would actually get multiplied by 5 times here which becomes 5 kg force then again it would get multiplied by 3 times 5 into 3 15 kg of force even by applying 1 kg you apply a force of 15 kg at this point so there are actually two magnifications one one is because of this hydraulic magnification other is called as the pedal ratio so this mechanical magnification is called as a pedal ratio it is called as a pedal ratio so you call this as pedal ratio here don't worry about this okay so here fw is fm into pedal ratio multiplied by aw by a <laughs> Guys, I am coming back to this now. We have got this F W value here that has to be substituted here. Guys, that has to be substituted here, which gives you break force. So here, if you substitute here, this becomes F C is the caliper force or the wheel force. The force at the wheel cylinder is. If you want the breaking force, it is F M. What is F M, guys? Okay. So this is force produced with the master cylinder, but we are actually trying to get the force here. So that we call it as the force at the pedal, sorry, or the lever. So we call it as F. We call it as F. So instead of this, we call it as F. Force in the lever is multiplied by the pedal ratio as well as the hydraulic magnification. So here, instead of F M, instead of F M or F C, we actually call this as F into P R into A W by A M. And here, this. Was substitution for this, and we are and we are left with small r by capital R here, small r by capital R, and one thing we are left here that here in the case of break this, okay, in the case of break this, here is one pad on one side and the other pad on the other side. Both the pads are trying to apply friction here. So here, if this suppose if this two are applying friction from both the sides so that means if we should, we should actually take account for two surfaces so all the break force which is produced at this point would be multiplied by number of number of friction surfaces which is actually called as small n which is called as small n okay and therefore <coughs> you should add this term so this is the formula for the force which is produced at the wheel which depends on the force produced i mean the force that you apply at the lever the force which is like 1 kg force multiplied by what is this pedal ratio multiplied by hydraulic magnification multiplied by radius of the brake disc divided by radius of the wheel And multiplied by n. I had sent a WhatsApp photo of some bike which is standing here, which has got two discs. When you got actually two discs, anybody noticed in the parking lot? Okay, drive. And maybe it needs, as I said, such because the vehicle may be going at such speeds in the city. Of course, finally, the whatever the number of discs. you can't believe the disc because what is actually stopping the vehicle is the contact between this the contact patch how many number of discs you have and it can only up to a point lock the wheels that's it and after once the wheels start start skidding it's useless so somehow they felt that maybe they got enough contact friction here so they have provided two discs to increase the braking but having more and more discs will not help because the friction between the tire and the 
for road is limited and that is given by what mu into w the weight of the vehicle what it is not recording it's stopped recording it's stopped recording okay Okay. 